Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, music, lifestyle, everything really. Depending on the guests, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miotis. On social media, you know me as Petey Beats. You'll recognize my guests from a lot of cool TV shows, including Shadowhunters, and most recently on Netflix, Grand Army, which is available now. We are speaking to Sydney Meyer. Sydney, welcome to Pop Alternative. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. And I know it's kind of weird because, you know, we were talking about this before. I mean, you did a Grand Army, like, quite some time ago, and it's actually yeah. it's finally out. That must be interesting for an actor to kind of be in that situation, right? It's very weird because you, you've, you like, moved on to other projects and you've, like, put it in the cast. has all gone back to the States and you're here. And it's, like, kind of a weird thing because it was such a saturated part of your life. And then it's, like, you kind of move on to the next thing and all of a sudden it, like, comes back in this huge wave. Absolutely. Um, and it's one of those things, too, where... It's almost like a little reunion too, right? Because you do this show, you know, you keep it, of course, the cast keeps in touch with each other, right? Yeah. But now it's like part of the job now You ha- is like to kind of get back in touch with everyone, right? You're doing press, oh, you're kind of talking. Our group chat is like blowing up now. Everyone's, <laughs> each other, everyone's sending each other articles. I feel like that's a prerequisite with like TV shows where casts always have a group, like the amount of times group chats are like mentioned. <laughs> Oh, always. There's always some like group chat. And it was so funny because when I when I was on the show at first, I didn't have an iPhone. I had an Android and they were like, you can't be in the group chat, man. We can't have a green bubble going on. Like, <laughs> you gotta get an iPhone or you can't be in the group chat. And I got an iPhone and now I'm in the group chat. <laughs> oh my God. It is, it is wild. Well, we'll talk specifically about Grand Army, but for you specifically as kind of like an actor, a storyteller, I like to refer to people, you know, who write, act, direct, perform you're all storytellers that's how i kind of refer to you as how did when did you decide that storytelling was something you wanted to do it was kind of bizarre like i come from a very academic family and that wasn't really i mean our parents put us in everything when we were young just like as extracurriculars they wanted us to experience things and um i ended up at a school for the arts from grade four to eight just because i wasn't happy at the other school i was at and i like played piano and i danced and i did some arts So I ended up there and we studied Shakespeare. We put on a play every year and I fell in love with the language of Shakespeare and being on stage. And it was just like something that was so poignant to me. And I ended up going to Shakespeare school at Stratford and it kind of like snowballed step by step by step. I loved being on stage. I loved, I think my academic brain like could find that step of Shakespeare. Like the language for me was so beautiful and I, slowly started to grasp like the art of storytelling in a way that I really, really loved and could relate to. And oh, absolutely. yeah, it kind of made its way down, trickled down to film and TV eventually. Yeah. I have that academic background too, that communications master's background that just kind of like always stays with me. Even when I like, even, totally. even when I'm just doing entertainment and, and I'm writing, I write scripts sometimes and I do social media and it always kind of stays with me all the time. Yeah. It's like, it's a part of you. And I think it's better to just embrace it than try <laughs> to like shove it in a corner somewhere. You're like, well, what? A, it's part of who you are and it's part of the way that your mind works. So you have to like find a way to help. And I, it. And I feel like we're, we're going, I mean, I, we're going, like, we're going a little bit off topic of what I want to talk about, but I just want to bring it up because I find that for someone who, you know, um, has a master's and someone who has a sister who's doing a PhD and my father, you know, has a PhD as well and it was a doctor and everything, it's just like school and like masters and higher education i think is like the like what is actually important about it i think isn't highlighted as much because you kind of learn like it's not actually the content and like the the actual books and stuff it's more like okay you have a project the deadline you have to go meet this person it like sets you up you know what i mean i learned so so 
early on in my life about like time management skills and like holding yourself responsible and just like critical thinking and figuring out like problem solving and same like my mom's a doctor my dad's a teacher my brothers are engineers and it was like that was just the way it was in my family there weren't excuses of like not getting things done on time or any of that and i think that that's helped me in my arts career because it's like it doesn't matter you have to figure out how to get it done and i think that those skills are very important like unpopular opinion too like you know people have like the amount of stress that i see of people with like exams and midterms and cramming oh. i've always been like okay like i get it but at the same time group projects and papers are kind of in my opinion more kind of like relatable to kind of the real life work life where you have like deadlines oh. you know what i mean like Absolutely. And that was something that my parents were like, if I was crying about projects or whatever, they're like, okay, like, sure, we understand you're upset, but like, you have to get it done. Or like, I remember I had a paper that was due and like, my computer shut down. And I when it came back on, it was gone. And I was like, sobbing. And I was like, write me a note and say that I did it. And they were like, no, what do you mean? That's your responsibility. So, like, I'll stay up with you, but do it, you know? So, so the term six and seven is a term me and my mom always talk about because I had six papers due in yeah. seven days one year. Yeah. Like six different papers were due in a week. Oh, God. It was, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're, uh, we're give me the keep jeebies talking about this again. <laughs> But um, this, we just went full academic for like the first six well, minutes of this interview. All right, guys, this is not art stuff. <laughs> but I mean... um, so, Grand Army is streaming now on Netflix. Um, yes. Congrats on the success of it so far. I mean, it's 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 pretty crazy when a show kind of releases. Just seeing, you know, all the comments and social media. It's almost like the calm before the storm. What were the yeah. first couple of days before the show release were like for you and the cast? very bizarre i mean it's weird because so much of the cast is in the states and a lot of them like got together in brooklyn for we had the day before it released there was like a digital premiere for the cast yep. um so a lot of them got together in brooklyn to watch it and obviously like our borders are closed so we can't go do that and so we had like a little premiere at our apartment but it was just it's kind of but i don't think it sunk in at that point i was like okay yeah it's coming out but i also was like i'm starting a new show and wasn't I, I don't think i had processed it and it's also like we had already seen the whole series yeah. like they want to see it and so it was like we that was really exciting when we got to see the episodes ahead of time but then it was like oh it's coming out and i don't think there was any process in my brain of like other people are going to see it now i know it's crazy the one thing i've kind of noticed about the show and i want your opinion on this being someone on the show and your character it's a very complex character, and I think your character kind of goes through motions where, you know, there's an evolution of your character where we see certain sides of you, and then we kind of see other sides of you that yeah. kind of surprise us a little bit. But the thing I've noticed about Grand Army is um, it I feel like it's it kind of has two, two specific layers that I want to talk to you about. One, there's the obvious that it tackles a lot of important issues and unfortunate issues in our society that – a lot can make an arg um, argument that a lot of things that happen in society are unjust and not fair. So it talks about kind of the system in place, right? Society, the system, the society, how certain things, you know what I mean? Characters get kind of sucked into a lot of unfortunate events. That's one part of it. The other part, Sydney, I see is a lot of characters um, make decisions that are not the best decisions. Yeah. And that, come off like they don't have a brain when they obviously do yeah. so it's kind of have you ever thought about that there's a society the unfortunate things of society but there's also a lot of like things that are kind of done to their themselves characters as well absolutely and i mean that was something that i struggled with because i i was like i i, I sat down with our showrunner so many times being like this doesn't especially with my character, like Anna, I was like, there's things in here that I can't justify. At first I had a lot of trouble with it because I was like, you know, they're so close, they're best friends. Um, Anna sees Joey the night that she's assaulted, she's upset. Mm -hmm. Joey asks me for her underwear because she has blood on hers. Okay. Then she comes forward with the assault accusation and I immediately take Tim's side. I'm like, for me, 
as a critical thinking person, wouldn't I say like, I saw her that night. She was upset. She said there was blood on her underwear. Like, wouldn't I ask more questions about the facts that? Like, first. Right. Like why does, if they were best friends since they were little kids, like why does Anna not ask Joey's side of it at it's all? It's funny like, you mention that because I was disappointed with your character in that regard. I was too. And that's what I was like, for me, it's really, really hard because for me, I look at that and I say, what, what's wrong with Anna? Like, she's a bad friend. Like, why is she not asking? And she's like, Tim's your brother or whatever. I'm like, I have brothers too. And I would think that you would ask some more about it. And we had to really work through like the levels of my relationship with Tim, my relationship with Joey. Like, is there maybe do I have feelings of more than friendship for Joey that are being causing me to be hurt by her actions with Tim? That's causing me to like react in a, a harsher, more extreme reaction that I'm not thinking logically. Well, yeah. You and know, I mean, I go through all these layers of justifying Anna's reaction. Mm -hmm. And because for me, at first on paper, I was like this, I can't justify Anna's reaction. And so I had to sit down with Katie and like go through all the layers of like, why? And also like, she's, 16 and she's a kid and all these things but it was it was hard for me at first to look that and i'm like i would be i'm so disappointed in anna's reaction and i and i don't want people to look at it and be like anna's a shitty friend so we had to like sit and kind of work through it and it, it was really hard for me because i'm like i love anna and joey's relationship and i don't want it to just be like lost but I you know think, i think the show does a very good job of showing kind of like what we talked about where you people don't think and they don't realize right. certain things okay the whole thing with you know dominique and her bag yeah. um during you know the lockdown um yeah. you know owen they don't they're not thinking about that's what this can be done you know what i mean yeah. and the same thing with you know couple of characters you know Anthony Ippolito I think does a very good job as an actor in the show of mm -hmm. playing Chi um where you're watching it and yeah you see these guys are like you know dumb jocks you know what I mean but they're there for they're there for you know they're there for their friends and everything and then that happens and you're just yeah. like shit you know what I mean like come yeah. on you know and I mean? that was like a big part of the conversation was just like, I'm 25, you know, I was the oldest person on set. And she's like, you have to understand that like, you're so much older too. And like, you have to have like some grace and understanding for the fact that like Anna's 16. And remember the way that you were when you were a kid and you were that young and like the impulsiveness that comes with being that age. And like, sometimes we just don't make the right decisions. Sometimes we don't, you know, and that's part of the story too, is that not everyone is the hero. Not everyone makes the right choice. And sometimes you're young and you're impulsive and you make the wrong decision. And like, you have to live with that too. You know, how do you come back from that? From, from making the wrong decision and not being there for your friend when you had to be, when you should have been, and you can't undo that, you know? A hundred percent. And I, and I think one thing that I don't think is very obvious too, though, about the show too, is a big important thing is, you know, the, like, I stress, you know, like, like upbringing, right? The important right. upbringing is important, right? You see situations where you see Jordan's family and everything, but, yeah. and they're there for them, even though it's a complex relationship. Right. But like, for example, like G, you know what I mean? Like, do you see his parents in the show? Right. No, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. don't, you know what yeah. I mean? Like until certain scenes, but it's just like, and he's staying for dinner at Jordan's house. Like, have you ever thought about that? Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, we asked a lot of questions about our parents and stuff. And it was funny because Katie actually had like our whole, she's like, yeah, your parents are architects. Like you're very wealthy. You have, have like an Irish background. Like she really had thought about what our family background was and like how our situation at home was affecting our, our view of the world and the way that we were brought up. And um, so that was something that we talked about a lot was like, what is it like for us at home? Are our parents around a lot? Um, do we have money? Are we comfortable? You know, like all those kinds of things because it just, I think, informed the characters so much. And you didn't see the way that we interacted with our parents, but there were these like mentions of our parents every now and then like oh our, at the beginning with the bomb it was like oh our parents are coming to get us whatever yeah. you know talked about it um and i think that that was something that you know we had to like try and put in our character's mind because there were things that 
had to be explained for ourselves, even if they weren't going to be explained for the audience. Like we had to justify our actions Mm -hmm. and it had to like monk and I would sit and do work on like, what's our family life? Like, like what are our parents like? What was it like when we were growing up? What is our relationship like? Has it always been this way? You know? And it was really nice. Like we did a lot of work together on our relationship as twins because it seemed that that gap had to be filled for ourselves. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, no, there's a lot of complex um, relationships, a lot of complex characters in Grand Army. It's it's evident um, in the show. Um, moving along to another show I want to, that you were in that I want to talk about because, you know, a lot of the fans would be upset at me <laughs> if I didn't. Um, I mean, Shadowhunters. I mean, like, um, I think that is the most underrated fan, like, group of fans. Like, I don't think people realize how, like, massive the Shadowhunter fans are. They're amazing. It's it's insane. It's insane. It's insane to me. But you think of Supernatural, you think of, you think of like Game of Thrones, right? Stranger, like Shadowhunter fans are like next level, man. They are the, I mean, it's wild to me. I was on that show for all of like four episodes, maybe. Like I wasn't a crucial part of But you had some important scenes. Yeah, I mean, I I was a character that was, like, very important in the book series. Yeah. So I think fans, um, like, were excited to see Helen Blackthorne brought to life on screen. And, like, I was lucky that I joined near the end. Um, so it was, like, very important storylines and, like, these crucial pieces of the story. And But I wasn't in the show for that long, you know. And the fans were, like, so incredibly receptive and kind and, like, there was this girl who made, you know, those pop vinyl dolls. Yeah. Someone handmade a pop vinyl doll of me as Helen Blackthorne, like ears and all and mailed it to my agent. That's awesome. I was like, what? This is incredible. Like they were just so loving and supportive and like, just, it it was remarkable to me. I I had no sense in my head when I joined the show that that was going to be, the response no it's gonna be this it is crazy um you are canadian yes and i am canadian and canada is amazing and (laughs) i find it's amazing to see how many like amazing like there's a lot of amazing actors that are from canada like in like american shows but like there's also a lot of like amazing like canadian shows that are getting like distribution like especially in comedy yeah. I mean, like, think about it. Like, Letter Candy, Working Moms, Shit's Creek, yeah. Kim's Convenience. Like, it's insane. Totally. Amazing. The stigma of, like, Canadian shows not being as good is out the window. People got it. I think that's, like, in a way, I think that's Canada's own fault. I think we have, like, an inferiority complex of, like, unless the States tells us it's good, we don't think it's good. And I think Canada is full of so much talent, not only of actors, but like writers, directors, producers, like. But it's Netflix and the distribution deals, right? Like the shows were around, like, I, like yeah. it's not like, cause I think people think like, oh, they didn't, they, they never had like Canadian shows. That's not true. Little Mosque like, on the Prairie, Corner yeah. Gas, like, come on. We had Tatiana Maslany for years. We had, <laughs> like, what do you mean? These shows were around and like, we've had talented people that were so dedicated to their work for years. Like, I think it's always been there. And I think it just needed like support from networks and it needed support from people who are willing to put money into the production up front of these shows, like to fund them the way that they do American productions. Yeah, No, it's, it, it's crazy. And, and you know what I have to say, like, have you noticed? And I actually interviewed, um, so I interviewed, you know, someone really cool about this. I interviewed Fred Penner um, about about this. So Fred Penner was like, a, like a really big, like um, he had like a TV show called P- Penner's Place. It was like he was like a children's song singer songwriter, right? <laughs> yeah. And he, I was asking him, like, I'm noticing like yourself, like Mr. Dress Up, like there was a lot right. of really good like Canadian content for like children, like 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 okay. children youth media. Like I thought that was really big. And he says, yeah, he's like we were known for having like the best like children's shows. Yeah. Which I find is interesting. Like, come on, look at all the amazing shows on YTV and Teletoon. I think like Canada has a lot of heart in its shows. And so I think like children's shows, things like that are, are great here. And I think that's what 
is starting to be seen as translated into the comedies and stuff is that this amazing like heart and love is coming out in sitcoms in shows like Orphan Black and whatever it's translating now into like a more widely accepted platform and people are like oh we can get behind that like and 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 it's starting to be more accepted but I think there's like this great heart and soul in Canadian work it's crazy no it's it's amazing um and I'm, I'm I'm really happy that you're you're doing a lot of amazing things too so congratulations thank you um thank you so much for coming on the show I really enjoyed chatting with you thanks for having me it was so good talking to you um so I mean Grand Army is on Netflix now so people could check it out yeah, watch it, you know? What yeah, else are you doing? Absolutely. Um, and where can people follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? You know, I'm on the interwebs. I'm on that Instagram and Twitter situation. <laughs> I'm there. <laughs> yeah, and they, um, what's the handle if people want to follow you? Oh, they're different on each one because I'm not actually like internet savvy. So on <laughs> Instagram, I didn't realize that people did that. So on Instagram, I'm Sydney Meyer 48 and on Twitter, I'm Meyer S 48. Amazing. Well, thank you so much and congrats with the success of the show so far. And I hope it continues. Thank you so much. It's a no good problem. talk. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this has been Popternative. You can check out Sydney Meyer in Grand Army, which is now available on Netflix. And until next time, this is Sydney Meyer and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.